If your doctor has recommended surgery to treat your diabetic retinopathy, it's important to remember that treatment does not cure retinopathy, but often is effective in preventing further vision loss. Let's discuss some of the important things you should understand about types of surgery to treat diabetic retinopathy. If you have swelling of the macula, the central part of your retina that is responsible for fine vision, it's called macular edema. Your ophthalmologist may recommend that you have a laser treatment called focal laser to reduce the swelling and slow progression of vision loss. An eye drop anesthetic is used for this outpatient procedure. The laser is aimed at specific areas at the back of the eye to reduce the swelling. The risks associated with focal laser treatment include bleeding, blind spots in your vision, abnormal vessel growth, persistent or progressive vision loss, and the need for more laser, eye surgery, or medication. If your ophthalmologist finds significant abnormal blood vessel growth on your retina, he or she may recommend another form of laser treatment called panretinal laser photocoagulation, or PRP. An eye drop anesthetic or an injection of anesthetic around the eye is typically used for this outpatient procedure. The laser is targeted at many spots all around the periphery of the retina to try to reverse the abnormal blood vessel growth and stop or prevent bleeding into the back of the eye. If untreated, these abnormal vessels lead to bleeding, scarring, retinal detachment, and loss of vision. Risks and possible side effects associated with PRP include temporary pain, decreased night or peripheral vision, blind spots in your peripheral vision, loss of central vision, retinal bleeding, retinal scar tissue, and persistence of the problem requiring additional treatment. It's important to note that while you do have a chance of experiencing any of these undesirable side effects from PRP, you have a greater chance of developing severe vision loss if you do not treat diabetic retinopathy at all. If your ophthalmologist discovers retinal scarring or detachment, or if you have a hemorrhage in the vitreous that is too large or too slow in clearing, a surgical procedure called a vitrectomy may be recommended. This procedure is usually done in the operating room on an outpatient basis. A local anesthetic injection along with sedation is generally used. With vitrectomy, your ophthalmologist removes the vitreous gel and blood from the back of your eye, removing any scar tissue from the surface of the retina. Laser treatment may be used on the retina to prevent further growth of abnormal blood vessels. Vitrectomy is a surgical procedure and as such carries certain risks associated with the anesthetic used as well as the procedure itself like any other surgery. Risks associated with vitrectomy surgery include bleeding, infection, retinal detachment, recurrence or new scar tissue, cataract formation, increased pressure in the eye, persistence or recurrence of the problem, possible loss of vision, possible loss of the eye, and the possible need for additional surgery or medication. During surgery, if your ophthalmologist finds a retinal tear or detachment or scar tissue, he or she may need to place a gas bubble in your eye to help the retina heal properly in place. If so, you will have to keep your head in a certain position for anywhere from a few days to a few weeks, depending on the type of gas used. You also can't fly in an airplane or go to high altitudes while the bubble is in your eye. In some cases, silicone oil may be used instead of a gas bubble, and this requires additional surgery for removal. You should be aware that after treatment, it could be possible for your condition to remain the same or even worsen. Any or all of the complications from a procedure may cause decreased vision or even possibly cause blindness. Additional procedures may be needed to treat these complications. Although it's impossible for your doctor to inform you of every potential complication that may occur with eye surgery for diabetic retinopathy, he or she will try to answer all your questions to your satisfaction. Please remember that all of these procedures for diabetic retinopathy are trying to prevent vision loss. That is, the goal is to try to maintain as much of your vision as possible for as long as possible. These procedures don't usually give you back any vision you may have lost, though sometimes removing blood or scar tissue can improve vision. Be sure to keep all your appointments or scheduled telephone calls with your ophthalmologist after treatment. During the follow-up visits or phone calls, you'll be checked for possible side effects and your doctor will discuss the results with you.